Hello and welcome to another episode of PBJ on the ETB, where we discover the sticky and sweet truth of the Bible. Sticky because we want you to hold on to it, and sweet because it makes your life better. Well, before we go any further, we always have to go out to our ever-encouraging Natalie. Natalie, what do you have for us? Thank you, PBJ. This week's high five goes to Don of Room and Deb Boat for the beefiest breakfast burritos from our annual Fall Fest. Thank you, Natalie. We are so jazzed and encouraged every time you encourage somebody here at First Church. So thank you, Natalie, and thank you for all those who are serving and blessing others here at First. Well, let's get into t- today's episode. We've been in the poetic books. We've talked about Job. We've talked about Psalms. And now we're on our second episode dealing with Proverbs. We learned last week that Proverbs is written by the wisest person other than Jesus, Solomon in the Bible. Solomon, the wisest person in the Bible. And Solomon wrote these Proverbs for everybody, but particularly for young people. And Solomon continues to lay out these two roads, choices, shall we say, a foolish road and a wise road. I think you know which one we're supposed to choose. And we remember from last week that Jesus also laid out two roads, a narrow road that leads to life and a wide road that leads to death. So let's continue our discussion about wisdom. And I brought a very special friend, and that friend is none other than Doc Scott. Glad you're here with us tonight. Thanks, PBJ. Glad to be here. And whether it's tonight or today or this afternoon, we're just glad you're here because this man is very wise. He's an actual doctor, you know, stethoscope type doctor. He takes care of people every day and he's so filled with wisdom. So I'm going to try to give you some tough questions because we don't normally have this much wisdom sitting in a chair at one time. So Proverbs chapter 14, that's Mm -hmm. where we're going to spend our time. And so we're not going to read the whole chapter, but in Proverbs 14, it talks about witnesses. Mm -hmm. And there there seem to be two types of witnesses. What what kind of witnesses are there? Well, there's a false witness and a faithful witness. A false witness is one who lies, while a faithful witness is one who tells the truth. Sounds like two choices again. Mm -hmm. We talked about foolish and wise. And now we're talking about somebody who tells the truth Mm -hmm. and someone who tells lies. So if we look at the whole Bible, who is the most faithful witness, Doc Scott? Jesus is the most faithful witness. You've uh, you've read the book of John, right? I have read the book. I mean, in the book of John, it says, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Mm -hmm. Yep. I told you he was wise. Mm -hmm. So when we think about Jesus as our model truth, does he tell the truth about everything? 100% of the time, you can take it to the bank. And so we read the Bible, of which the Bible, the book of John says, in the beginning was the word. Well, the word is Jesus, so everything there is true. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's truth for today, right? Absolutely. Not just truth for yesterday. No. But truth for today. Well, so let's talk about foolish people and wise people. Have you ever known a wise person? I've known a few, a handful. I bet your wife is wise. Absolutely. My wife is one of them. Very wise. And my wife is very wise as well. And um, have you ever met a foolish person? I've met a few of them. Don't have to name their names. But yes, there are foolish people out there. And our hope is that they choose the wise path and get off the foolish path. So how does Proverbs say a fool responds to sin? Unfortunately, they just don't take it seriously. They laugh about their sin. Yeah, when I think about that, Doc Scott... I think that there are probably times in my own life where 
I might have watched something or listened to something that I may have laughed at that I shouldn't have because it didn't please God. Have you ever found yourself in a similar place? Oh, absolutely, unfortunately. Well, and we're grateful to the Lord for mm-hmm. grace. Grace that forgives us of those sins. But we don't want to get stuck on this wide road that takes us in places that laughs at the things that make God very sad. So if this is what the foolish person does with sin, that is laugh, what does the wise person do? Well, they take their sin very seriously and they repent of it. Yeah. And so it's like there's a fire that's called sin and a foolish person would walk up to the fire and just play with it. Whereas the wise person knows they need to stay away from it. There is a definite choice put up there for us as to choose the wise or the foolish path. Do you remember the story, if we move all the way to the New Testament, that Jesus told about the wise man and the foolish man? Yeah, not only the story, but also the song. Yeah, it was a great song that we sang. We probably shouldn't sing it now, but maybe the kids could sing it at home. But the wise man built his house upon the... Saint Rock. The Rock, the yes. Rock. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And the foolish man built his house upon the sand. Yeah. And then, of course, we know the rains a came a tumbling down. Mm-hmm. And the rains came down, and what went up? The water. The floods went up. And then what happened to the foolish man's house? <sighs> Destroyed. Destroyed. And what happened to the wise man's house? Stood strong. Yeah, and Jesus gives that simple story for us to remember what was started in Proverbs about choosing a wise route or a foolish route. Well, in this chapter in Proverbs, Solomon also talks about what it means to be happy. What did he say we need to do to be happy? We need to... Doesn't it have something to do with the poor? Yeah, we need to be generous to the poor. Now, that isn't the first thing that often comes to my mind when I think about being happy. I think of maybe, you know, going someplace fun like Adventureland or going out and playing disc golf or something. But Proverbs says, you want to be happy, help the poor. Mm -hmm. Because doesn't God always have a place in his heart for the poor? He absolutely does. And the poor people weren't created poor, were they? No, it's unfortunate that sin, you know, came in and created poverty. Because there are some people that have much, Mm -hmm. and some people that have little, and some people that have nothing. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says to us, and I think we both have much, you want to be happy, share it. Mm -hmm. Give it away and help other people. Have you found happiness in doing that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's one of it really is a very happiness creating behavior in our lives. Well, last week when we were together with our special guest Farmer Ward, I asked him this tough question. I said, "Farmer Ward, um the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom." And I said, "How do we get wisdom?" And he said, "To fear the Lord." Well, What does this chapter say about the fear of the Lord? It says the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. A fountain of life? Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with the fountain of youth. I get asked that a lot in clinic. The fountain of youth, is that in the Bible? No, no, not anywhere in the Bible. I could sure use a slurp from that (laughs) fountain. It might. Eh, You're looking good, but it might be a little helpful. Well, I used to look more like you. (laughs) But let's go on from that. Not the fountain of youth, but the fountain of life. Mm -hmm. So... Here's another tough question, but you're very wise, Doc Scott. What does it mean to fear the Lord? I think it means just understanding who God is, who he says he is in his word, and then trying to live in light of that. Yeah, I think that's a great definition. Realizing that we're small, God is big, God is great. So we don't walk around afraid of God, do we? No, absolutely not but we respect Mm -hmm. him and we respect his ways. You know, the book of Proverbs also talks about patience and that part of being wise is to have patience and that we would be slow to anger. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had issues with patience? 
Yeah, I've got three kids under four. Absolutely. That would definitely test your patience. Absolutely. At times it does. I used to have kids under four. Now I just have a basset hound, and that tests my patience. So I get it. But wisdom means we grow into being patient people Mm -hmm. and slow to anger. And that can actually happen because of the presence of wisdom in our lives. So Proverbs also goes into talking about nations and what makes a nation great. Do you remember what it said? It says righteousness is what makes a nation great and doing what God says. It doesn't seem like that is being followed too much today. Now we're struggling a little bit here in the United States. Yeah, we are. A matter of fact, hasn't it been true that so often making a nation great seems to be how much money we have or how big our armies are, but it's actually righteousness. Do you think we're ever going to arrive there? Uh, It's going to take a revival. A huge revival, Mm -hmm. isn't it? But once again, it points to the fact that we're not going to really find our hope in Washington or Des Moines. No, absolutely not. We're going to find our hope in the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Well... This chapter actually talks about health, Dr. Scott, and you're here because you are a doctor. Now, health, besides talking about giving up sugars, eating vegetables, taking vitamins, and exercising more, what does Proverbs actually say about our health? It says we have to develop a pure heart and turn from sin, and that's the picture of health. Yeah. A picture of health. So it's not just our physical health, but Mm. what other type of health is it? We need to be spiritually and emotionally healthy. Yeah, and it all fits together because that's how God made us. Yeah, that's exactly what we talk about in clinic every day. Emotionally, spiritually, physically healthy individuals. Now, you heard it here. That's good advice, and you don't even have to pay a copay. (laughs) This is good advice. I am so grateful that we have been able to share Doc Scott with all of you in this episode of PBJ on the ETB. So thank you, Doc Scott, for all you do every day. And thank your wife as well for caring for the people in this region. And there's a lot of things that people are going to be doing this coming week. But what do you want them to remember to do most of all? Read your Bible. See you next week. Thank you.